barns, the symbol of American agriculture, are disappearing from the rural landscape at an alarming rate. Time takes its toll, and structures that were once vitally important in daily farm operations often fall into disrepair and are either torn down or collapse. And as the iconic buildings fade into history, America also loses a way of life. It's important to preserve the really unique in the everyday. Uh, because when you look back at our life, um, you know, it isn't just about uh, the church or the theater, it's those everyday places that we spend our days uh, that we want to remember what our daily life was like, right? And the work we did. And so one day, 50, 60 years from now, I mean, the world we see, most people are gonna, it's gonna be a distant memory of, and, and so we need to have some icons to kind of give us a glimpse back. 200 years ago, 90% of the population farmed. Today, it's just 2%, and the average age of those that farm keeps increasing. According to the 2012 Census of Agriculture, 57% of those who farm are 55 years or older. To broaden what is already known about a disappearing way of life, Iowa silos and smokestacks the only historic district in the country devoted to farming and industries related to agriculture, and the Grout Museum in Waterloo are working together to compile oral histories from people involved in farming. I think the 1930s to the 1970s is indeed that greatest generation for, for farming because they had gone through so much. The Depression in 1921, the Depression of the 1930s, uh, the really hard times, particularly in the mid-30s. Uh, then coming out of that, World War II is this tremendous boom period. 70s, you see this explosion of farming, followed by those horrible 80s, which, you know, just devastated folks who had expanded a bit too much, had taken too many chances, and uh, were overextended. And the farmers that I talk to, they talk about the 1980s, and they say, you know, we should have known that. You know, we should have known that because the same thing happened in the 1920s and to some extent it happened a bit in the 50s, but we didn't learn. We didn't remember. Over the past century, there have been revolutionary changes in agriculture, technological advancements in how seeds are both planted and harvested. The innovations have enabled U.S. farmers to produce 262% more food with 2% fewer inputs than what was grown just 65 years ago. We need to be able to tell, particularly school kids, what the life was like 40 years, 50 years ago, and how a farm might look today. And so by engaging people with stories, we get that attention from them that they might not give a panel on the wall that they had to read. According to Niemeyer, farmers are great storytellers, and it's often difficult to limit their conversation to just two hours. Well, I try to pull the emotions uh, of, of what it means to be a farmer, but we also want to get the facts, okay? I mean, you know, as, as Fred Strobin was talking about this morning, you know, he could sort of tell you it took X number of minutes to pick by hand, you know, and, and now you can do it in, in virtually no time at all. Back in the 30s, we only got, we didn't have hybrid seed, we didn't use any fertilizer, and we only expected to get 40 to 60 bushels an acre. Gradually, there were a few people who would brag about 100 bushel corn, but those people that got 100 bushel corn, either they lied a lot or they had a lot of, of uh, they might have a, a dairy herd and they might put uh, 10 tons of, of cattle manure on, the, on their per acre. That way they would get enough nitrogen they could. We like to ask the question, what will farming be like in 10 years? You know, 10 years ago, we would have said, what would the farming be like in 25, 30 years? Because we thought it was going to take that long to change. Now we realize that in 10 more years, farming will have changed so much. You know, and the older farmers, they have some sense of, of why things have changed, and you have some opinions of whether it's good or not. Uh, now the new combines and, and uh, 
you pretty much stay in the cab. And when you get out, some of them even, if you get out of the cab, the machine will turn itself off, and, and which is a good safety factor. Live as though you're going to die tomorrow. Farm as though you're going to farm forever. It's easy in today's world to take agriculture for granted. But from 1933 to today, the population of the world has grown from 2 billion to 7 billion. A farmer somewhere raised most of the food you eat, produced at least some of the materials used in making your clothes, and even helped fuel some of the nation's 253 million cars. While advancements in agriculture have left an indelible mark on virtually every aspect of modern life, it's still important to preserve crucial parts of the American experience, whether they are barns or vivid stories of how things used to be. After all, History never looks like history when you're living through it. For Market to Market, I'm Paul Yeager.